Welcome to this feature-length episode of our journey up the west coast of WA. Join us as we travel the coast from Perth all the way to Exmouth over a two-week period. another episode everyone we're a couple of hours north of Perth just at a beach camp so we've actually been in Perth for uh, a few days now getting a few things sorted on the car a bit of our uh, damage and um, things we needed fixing from the canning if you want to see a full rundown of the damage report and the vehicles you can check out our canning rundown video today we're just going to go keep heading north as you can probably tell it's quite cold here it's windy and we're keen to just get up into some warmer weather and uh, yeah, get some beach driving done. Dirk Hartog are really excited for up around Coral Bay, Exmouth, and we're gonna go into the Pilbara and Karajini and keep heading. So we'll bring you along. Hello everyone, good morning. So we've just pulled into the Pinnacles. Um, we've done the 4K loop. So in order to access the Pinnacles now, you either pay a $15 fee for your car to go through or you get your National Parks Pass, which is $120 and it covers all National Parks in WA. Yeah, it is worth it. Yeah, if you're going up the coast and that's definitely worth it. Yeah, so we just popped in, had a look, had a drive around. You can walk between the Pinnacles and stuff, which is really cool. And then now we're just gonna continue heading north. I think tonight we're hoping to get up near Port Gregory and around Hut Lagoon so there's a pink lake up there and uh, camp up near Lucky Bay which is the spot Ronnie told us about so we've got four and a half hours I think to get there in more case to do today. up to Lucky Bay Campground so you pay at the ranger station it's $15 a night and then there's the campground we're actually going to air down and then head to the beach and the dunes so he said we can do that because we have a four-wheel drive he said if you actually get to Lucky Bay there's a spot on top of the dunes where you can watch whales so hopefully we'll find that spot but yes we're going to air down now get some cool photos in the dunes yeah <laughs>
Nothing beats that. Okay, so we have pulled up to camp. We are between uh, some sand dunes and the beach. It was actually quite hard picking a spot to camp at because there were so many options. And it would have been epic to be on top of a dune, but with the slight breeze that we have, it just wasn't going to be protected. So we've decided to come down in between some dunes, but again, it's still a pretty epic spot. You could spend so long here. We've just got the night here and then we're gonna to continue to head north because we've got Dirk Hartog Island in a couple of days. So yeah, we're just gonna cook up some dinner, probably have an early night. And yeah, we'll see you guys in the morning. So we have just come out of the dunes and off the beach area, so we're just airing back up. It's a really nice camp. It was a really, really nice yeah. camp. Um, you do need a chemical toilet if you're camping up in the dunes, mm -hmm. but it's quite nice camping around here as well. There's toilets is, and yeah. facilities and stuff, yeah. but yeah, it's pretty cool up in the dunes finding your own spot and yeah, watching the whales. Yeah, there were so many whales. We got a little clip of one, but um, then they kind of disappeared. Disappeared into the deep. Yeah, but um, so today we're heading up to Calbarry and then we'll continue to head north. We'll try and get to Francois Perron, but if we don't, um, I don't know if we will. I don't know, we'll call it with plan B at some point. Yeah, pretty loose plans. We have yeah. nowhere to be, really. Yeah. <laughs> After leaving uh, camp this morning, we've driven through Kalbarri, stopped to get a few supplies, and now we're actually at Kalbarri National Park. So here there is heaps of hikes to do. We're not going to do them, we did them back in 2019, but we're going to go see the uh, nature's window and then the new skywalk.
All right, we're just setting up camp now. We've got this beautiful little spot, Eagle, Eagle Bluff. Bluff. Adrian, what do you think of the West Coast so far? Absolutely beautiful, loving it. We've just started to go north, so we're getting a bit warmer. It's time for the jumpers and boosts to come off so I can just go barefoot for the rest of the trip. Ooh, that is Adrian style. And look at that. Yeah. It's it's really good beach camping so far. Yeah. It's been cold, but yeah. it's been really nice. And I was quite surprised at how we managed to find spots just to ourselves, yeah. even though it's school holidays. Yeah, we're coming into like the busiest time. Yep. Yeah. We've had to book, but we've still managed to get bookings and I don't know there's plenty of room in WA maybe. It's a big start. <laughs> Coconut rice, salad, just a free mix, like Asian style sort of salad and some um, like sweet chili and lime salmon. And uh, yeah, we've been using this for a couple of days now, the Jet Bowl Genesis stove. Really good. I've been thinking about it and main reasons you buy this is the size, it's tiny, build quality, it's built really, really well. Efficiency, it's like pretty good on gas, I think. Only thing is it is pretty expensive, but if you want that really good quality, it's been good fitting into the troopy. We got up uh, bright and early before the sun had risen and we went to the Monkey Maya dolphin feeding experience, which Ellen really liked. Yeah. <laughs> at the moment we are at the entry of Francois Perron National Park, so here on like the Shark Bay Peninsula and we're going out to the National Park today. So we're just airing down. We, we came here. Love in, this area. We're yeah. Awesome. 
came here in 2019, so really keen to go and see it again. Yeah, keen to get some nice shots and yep. see what's changed. Maybe yep. nothing. <laughs> Entry fees and camp fees apply via cash at the entry point to Francois Peron National Park. But as you'll see, it's well worth it. With campsites, it's first in, best dressed to get a spot. The roads in don't require any hardcore four wheel driving, but can get quite rough. Bit of a bumpy. <laughs> <laughs> They're like giant corrugations. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Alrighty, so we're walking down here to Skipjack Point and we're going to see what we can see. What can you see, Alan? <laughs> Francois Perron is famous for its abundant array of sea life and some truly untouched coastline. In our opinions, it's also some of the most spectacular. Welcome to Cape Peron. So we are obviously in Francois Peron National Park. This is the most probably westerly point of the park and in my opinion, the most dramatic spot. It's very pretty. So yeah. there's really red, quite dramatic cliffs, white sand. And then very blue, blue water. So at Skipjack Point, we actually were lucky enough to see a dolphin and a turtle. That's a really good spot if you want to see some marine life. And then we're just going to spend sunset down here. Adrian has wet the line. We're just sitting back and waiting for magic to happen with the sun. Yeah, it's gonna, it's gonna pop. The cliffs yeah. are gonna pop. It's gonna be beautiful. Yeah. We're gonna take you along with us. <laughs> After another beautiful west coast sunset, we head back to camp to cook some dinner. We are up early the next day to restock before our drive out to Steep Point and Dirk Hartog Island. Good morning 
everyone, we're back on the road. We are actually leaving Francois Perron today and heading to Sea Point and then tomorrow we're heading to Dercartov Island, which we're really excited about, something we haven't done. Yeah, no, really keen to jump on, heard good things about it and we kind of got really lucky. We managed to get on during school holidays and there is a limited amount of vehicles allowed on the island at any one time. I've never seen sand so bumpy as this <laughs> Yeah, so we're in a very bumpy bit of sand at the moment, as Adrian just said. It's like giant corrugation. It's like yeah. literally giant. It's <laughs> sort of weird mobile. You literally just have to like crawl over them. Yeah, so yeah, it's uh, yeah, a bit of slow going this driving morning. this morning. We're going to hit a hot tub on the way out. There's a natural spa hot like spring. artesian waters. Artesian, yeah. It's pretty nice. We've been in it before. So yeah, got a pretty big day ahead. Big drive. Lots of fall driving out to the camp, the steep point. Uh, most westerly point of Australia. So it should be a good day. <laughs> Tub's closed. Yep. It's not written anywhere, but it's closed Monday and Fridays between 8 and 11 for cleaning. It is Monday at 8.40 at the moment. So keep that in mind if you want to come to the hot tub. Which is a real shame. Oh, well, I mean, at least they clean it. Well, it, it's not a shame they clean it. It's a shame that we're here at this time. Yeah, it's a shame that we're just here at this time. That could be us. That could have been us. <laughs> Look, there's Matt. Oh, a bit more hair than Matt though. <laughs> Alright, so we're walking down to Shell Beach and the um, name says it all. It's a beach made of shells. <laughs> but the reason is because this bay here is twice as salty as the open ocean. This to do with the currents and coming in, not being able to get out, evaporating and creating a really salty um, environment where not too many animals can actually live. But there is one particular variety of shells that can and now they're fried. And now there's just beaches of them. After a quick look at Shell Beach, we head to the most westerly point of mainland Australia, Steep Point. It's been great visiting places for a second time since our first lap in the Hilux in 2019. But it's also amazing just how much has changed. Many roads that weren't tarred before are now sealed, including a large section of this one. We drove back the few kilometres down the road to the barge campsite for Dirk Hartog Island, where we would be departing in the morning. It is part of the national park and needs to be booked. So 
because it is super windy tonight, we have pulled out the induction, which <laughs> is, um, yeah, it's just good in conditions like this. It's great to have the option, mm. um, all the options of cooking. Yeah, induction, it's really, really good. I like yep. it, I rate it, don't diss it. Yeah. <laughs> We settled into a stormy and windy night, excited for the adventure starting the next day on Dirk Hartog Island. So definitely tune into that one next week, you don't want to miss it. See you in the next one, cheers. Welcome to this overland traveller's journey to Dirk Hartog Island off the WA coast. With its rich history dating back to Dutch explorer Dirk Hartog's landing in 1616, this island is a must do for any adventurers. Pristine beaches, dramatic cliffs and vibrant marine life create a haven for modern explorers. Join us in uncovering the mysteries and marvels of this timeless destination. Welcome to Dirk Hartog Island. So we have jumped off the barge onto Dirk Hartog Island. Really exciting. We've got to head to the lodge first, just get a bit of info, see what there is to do. But it's a big island. It's you know like 80 kilometers uh, long. So there's a lot to see. It's a pretty good forward driving, I think. So it should be a lot of fun. We started meandering north up the island and were immediately taken by its rugged and untouched beauty. It wasn't long before we found a road to our first stop. So we're driving up to the blowhole and you can see it off in the distance, it is blowing. Yeah, it's, uh, it's a big swell today so um, Kieran, the guy on the boat, he took us over, he said um, yeah it's going to be absolutely pumping today, it's just pretty cool. arrived at the lodge and we have set up camp so we are camped at the homestead bay campground this is our spot beautiful beach behind us um, and we're here for the next couple of nights then we'll venture north um, do a bit of sightseeing and then maybe stay at a camp up there but yeah it's pretty nice really unexpected I just I don't know what I didn't know what I was meant to expect but this was not it there's a bar here so you can have coffees um, 
and you know drinks in the afternoon so yeah The bar is a great place to watch sunset and chat to the other travellers on the island. You can't really beat a couple of beers on tap. This is what we're after. We started the next day driving north on the eastern side of the island, exploring all the points of interest along the way. Good morning, morning. everyone. So we're just here at Notch Point yep. on Dirk Hartog Island. We had a pretty slow morning this morning. It was a bit of a windy night last night, so yep. we're a bit slow getting out of bed. Uh, but we're going for an explore today. We're just heading north, north. of the island. Yep. We might get to sort of towards the end today, but we want to stay on this side of the island uh, because it is very windy over the other side and we want to make a camp down the other end, but on this side where it's less windy. Um, but yeah, we're just going to explore, see what there is to see, do a bit of four wheel driving. This is stunning down here. Yeah, so far we're pretty impressed. <laughs> We got to the most northern point of the island and started to look around for a camp. But not before Adrian got himself in a little trouble on the beach. All right, we're just doing a little scouting mission. Uh, we think we found a good camp off to the left. Adrian just went down to the right here to have a little look onto the beach, but it's really, really soft. Um, so he's just got a little stuck. So we got the max racks out. Get an hours out because they're actually easy to get out with the little side table. So, man. How you going, Adrian? Good, mate. mate. Waiting on a mate. Just waiting on a mate. <laughs> We weren't in a rush to do this recovery as the water's edge wasn't anywhere near. It's lucky we had a bit of time though as the sand was very soft and it took a few goes to spin the unit around and get it back on the track. Alright, further is out. Ellen forgot to press record, no. <laughs> okay. You had one job, Ellen! One job! Max Tracks for the win! Honestly, Max Tracks made that so much easier. I, that would have oh. been such a mission without them. Yeah. That would have been shovels, PSIs down. If, like, you're I'm, already low. I'm low. And we would like winching is just like, ah, oh, turning better. it around. It's much easier for these. Max Tracks do make this kind of stuff a lot easier. And that's a hella soft. <laughs> that's really soft. <laughs> yeah. After we 
got Adrian out. We were looking for camp and couldn't really find anything that was overly sheltered. So we've continued on. We've just come to Cape Inscription, which has the lighthouse that they built here in the 1900s. It's really cool. They've also restored the old, which would be like homesteady type building uh, back in 2012, I think it was. So yeah, a lot of history here, which is really cool, worth seeing. But now we're going to try and find somewhere protective to camp. <laughs> afternoon everyone welcome to camp so we are on the western side of the island tonight at western point we initially were going to try and camp on the east side though we couldn't really find anything that was overly protected so we've ended up here it's quite a beautiful spot um, we are at the block which is you can probably guess by the massive rock behind me I think that's why they call it the block um, but yeah we're gonna have a pretty relaxing afternoon Adrian is fishing Matt and Ellen are down with him at the moment we've seen heaps of whales cruise past which is pretty cool to see we've even seen a manta ray today and some dolphins so it's been a day full of wildlife um, and yeah it's been really fun exploring so yeah tomorrow we'll finish off doing the west coast we may head back to the east coast to camp for the night but we'll just kind of see what we discover tomorrow So we've just come for a drive down to Mystery Beach this morning, so we're following the west coast south. Now there is another track, it's a bit more of a four wheel drive track apparently. It's a recent sort of track I think, because it's not really listed on a map. So we're really keen to do that one back and it will lead us back over to the east side of the island. Yeah, we're going to see what it's like and probably head back over east for a camp this afternoon. This beach, because it's on the west coast facing the Indian Ocean and it's really washing up, there's just so much stuff on this beach, just like, you know, rubbish, just random stuff. So we're just having a little look around. It's just sort of interesting seeing what just floats up. This track is definitely the best four-wheel driving on the island with a few dunes. Besides that, the coastline was absolutely spectacular. Look at this, we're on the west coast of Dirk Hartog Island. We got told about this little track from Mystery Beach, which cuts along the west coast and loops back in. And so far, it is beautiful. Big dunes, watching dolphins and whales. Oh, beautiful. We made our way back to the east, more protected side of the island, and made camp right on the water.
morning everyone. So we've had a pretty relaxing morning this morning. We watched sunrise from the tent which was really cool and then got up had a leisurely breakfast and now uh, we've just spent a few hours on the beach. There was so much washed up coral which was really cool to like walk around and see. Now we're just going for a bit of a drive. We're just heading back to the homestead today. Um, we've got another night booked in there to camp, so we're doing that. But we've just found this track off the main track. It's not listed on HEMA. We thought we'd just come and have a look. So far, it's pretty cool. You get a really epic view up here. I'll show you. From our vantage point, we could see a large school of salmon. Adrian just had to wet the line to see if he could catch us in dinner. While he was fishing, it was fantastic to watch some ospreys hunt fish and chase other birds. Don't believe it. Yay! Woo! And finally, Adrian's persistence has paid off. We headed back to camp, got the fire going, and got the fish ready. As you should know by now, Adrian is a winemaker and he owns a winery in Tumbarumba. Cool climate wines. Yeah, cool climate. So you make some fantastic white wines and we've got some fish tonight and we're doing really fresh sort of whole fish cooked in foil and it's going to be lemony, dill, yeah. uh, garlic, onion, cherry tomatoes. So what are you going to, what are you going to pull out tonight for All us, right. mate? We've got this Albarino that we've been carrying around and we've saved it for this moment right now. Fresh it's fish. It's Ellen's favorite, isn't it? It's, it's absolutely Ellen's yeah. favorite. It's a Spanish grape variety. It'll pair beautiful with those flavors. Well, yes, we have had it quite a few times, Holly and I, and it is very, very nice. So I'm excited to enjoy that. We do have a code yes. for Obsession Wines, and we really want to get Adrian a couple of sales. I need diesel. <laughs> I need diesel. <laughs> Going out and fixing all our stuff in our car. It doesn't come cheap for Adrian. Yeah. Go and buy a couple of bottles, I really want to. He makes some awesome stuff. I'm not just yeah. saying that, it's yeah. bloody good wine. Give it a go, obsessionwines.com.au. Yep. Jump on, and what's our code? OLT15. Holly knows, yeah. OLT15. That's 15%, it's actually Yeah, great. 15%, yeah. Get on it. We're gonna try it tonight. Tell you You're code. missing out, <laughs> so don't miss out. <laughs> so. Good morning everyone, we are back in the cars this morning and we are heading to Surf Point. This is a sanctuary zone so no fishing. But apparently it's a spot, I think, I'm assuming you can surf there, hence the name Surf Point, but also apparently there's uh, sharks. You can see some sharks, so hopefully we'll get to see some. We kept heading south to see the last few points of interest on the island, and after, went to the point where you catch the ferry back to the mainland.
Good morning everyone. So we jumped off the island just yesterday, drove out of Steep Point and went north up to Carnarvon mm -hmm. where we did a bit of a restock last night. Now instead of heading directly north because we do have a few station stays booked up around Ningaloo Reef, we've decided to go inland quickly to a place we've never been before in the Gascoigne region, the yep. Kennedy Ranges and possibly Mount Augustus if we have the time. Yeah so we'll go in, we'll have a look and we'll take you along for the journey but it's not a massive detour off the coast so if you are coming up the coast we'll, um, we'll see if it's worth doing. Yeah. We'll bring you along. <laughs> We started the 174 kilometre drive from Carnarvon on the coast to the small township of Gascoigne Junction, where you can restock and explore the Kennedy Ranges from. After a quick look through town, we headed straight to the National Park and hit our first obstacle, the Gascoigne River. So we pulled into Gascoigne Junction, the little town there. The information centre was actually closed, so we couldn't get any info, but they did have little pamphlets. So we've got one on here, Mount Augustus, and a book on the whole area, which in my opinion is the best like tourist book we have ever seen. It actually has locations on how far everything is. I'll show you. So this one here. So if you're in the area, make sure you grab this little booklet. And we have discovered that there is actually a Kennedy Ranges loop track which we're going to do. So it's 270 k's long from junction to junction. It says it's going to take one and a half days. We're kind of hoping it won't take that long, but we'll, kind of, we'll just see. So we're starting it now, we're just airing down, and then we'll go from there. There was still a decent amount of water in the river after some large rain events, but the base was firm and we crossed no worries. After the river, we started the four-wheel drive loop around the Kennedy Ranges, and it wasn't long before we came to our first point of interest, Mooka Creek, which is famous for its very odd rocks. So I've just pulled over at Mooka Creek, so it's the first kind of point of interest along the loop track. Adrian really likes rocks, and as we were driving through this creek bed, we just noticed all of these epic coloured rocks. We're just walking around. Look at, we don't know how they're kind of formed, but the colours, and like the junctions between colours, it's absolutely insane. Then you've got one like this. Obviously the other layer, that red layer is broken off at some point. Look how thin it is. And then on this side you can just see where it stops being red and white. Like it's just, they're crazy colours and they're everywhere. Pretty cool. It's very cool. If you're travelling through the area, it's well worth the stop to have a look at these rocks. They're honestly some of the most spectacular we have seen. After Mooka Creek, we continued on the four-wheel drive track. It was slow going, but not too technical. It was a beautiful drive through dry riverbeds as we skirted the base of the ranges. We started going up into the ranges where we went from slow rocky tracks to more open sandy tracks on top of the plateau. So we've just crested on top of the ranges and we're still following the track, but for some reason we're in sand dune country now with spinifex. 
yeah, you just don't expect the top of the ranges to be sort of in sand dunes. Yeah, it's, it's very, random. very random. Um, and the bottom section has all been like through dry creek beds, very rocky. And then I kind of expected to get up here and it to be the same, but no, we're on sand dunes, which is nice and nice change. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Driving along the ridgeline was definitely a highlight on the track for us, and with such a good view, we thought it was about time to start looking for a camp. Hello everyone, welcome to our camp tonight. So we are camped up on top of the Kennedy Ranges. It took us pretty much most of the day to the four-wheel track, four drive track to this point. So that's why we decided to pull up here. If we kept going down, we probably would have made it to the campsite well after dark. So we decided to pull up and it's been pretty spectacular. Obviously you've just seen the colors change from sunset. Matt just cooked up a prawn pasta for dinner, so yeah, really excited. It's a really nice spot, we're both showered, or we've all showered, so we're feeling good. It's good morale in camp right now. But yeah, it's pretty stunning. And um, we're obviously gonna do a star lapse here, which will be really cool. Matt's seen where the Milky Way is moving, um, and the sun, oh, sorry, and the moon isn't gonna get in the way this time, which will be really cool, so yeah. Pretty epic spot. Good morning everyone, so we are back in the cars. We just have this little bit of a four-wheel drive track to finish, so we're still up the top. We'll then head down the bottom and then go check out Honeycomb Gorge, which is a pretty big point of interest to see in the Kennedy Range. Yeah, so we'll go have a look. Jeez, camp last night was epic, hey? Yeah, it was really cool. Really, really, really cool. It's one of those ones to pitch yourself that you're even camping there. And, yeah, loved it. Yeah. We finished off the loop driving down to the base of the ranges. Again, the four-wheel driving wasn't particularly hard and there was lots to see on the way. Our next point of interest was Honeycomb Gorge. made it into the Kennedy Ranges. We're at Honeycomb Gorge and we're going into the gorge to have a look. So it's 600 meters return, so not a big walk. If you're driving up Australia's west coast, the Kennedy Ranges is absolutely worth a look.
Hey guys, everyone. welcome back to another episode. So, you probably know this sign, it's just north of Carnarvon, King's, King Waves Kill. Yes. Pretty famous, everyone gets a photo there. We Definitely got a couple now. <laughs> one with the Hilux, one with the Junior. Yeah. Uh, welcome to this next episode. Uh, we're heading up the coast. So we're at a pretty cool part of Australia. We're going up the yep. Cold Coast. We're going to be camping around Ningaloo Reef on some station stays, which yep. we haven't done before. We're really excited just to sort of chill on the beach, um, go some snorkeling. Have Adrian catch us fish. Catch us fish for us. <laughs> just feed us fish. Yeah. Uh, it should be really nice. A real holiday kind of, you know, sun. Kind of vibe. Then we'll head up to Exmouth. Then from Exmouth, check out Charles Knife Gorge. Um, and then probably start heading back inland. So yeah. hopefully a lot to see in this episode. Yeah, yeah we'll take you along. Let's do it. Yeah, We started heading north up the coast of WA. To do the station stays, we definitely recommend booking well in advance. The beauty of these station stays is you can get a site right in the beach, with Ningaloo Reef literally just off the shore, making it some of the most accessible and beautiful snorkeling you can do in Australia. This really is some of the most spectacular and untouched coast in Australia. Nothing beats relaxing watching the whales swim by and the sunset in the west. up camp at Marura Station. I don't know if I'm pronouncing that right. I asked Adrian how to say it and it, no one really gave me. Anyways, we're at a station which is south of Coral Bay. We're here for two nights. Um, we got in last night. We didn't really do any filming because nothing really happened. Um, you have to book all of these campsites online. It's $8 per person per night, so fairly cheap, but there's no facility. So you need to bring a chemical toilet and take everything out with you. Um, last night was a pretty good night. The wind did pick up and it's been pretty breezy today, but the sun is still hot. So we're gonna head back down to the beach and maybe go for a little swim. Probably can tell I have something to say. Tell you what, one thing on the West Coast, beautiful coastline, love it. Water and everything, beautiful, beautiful, everything. Man, I'll tell you what wears thin is the wind. It is windy here. Adrian, what do you reckon? Very windy. <laughs> windy. Okay. It's just windy. But I mean, it's all right, it's still beautiful stuff. So. It is, but I, I swear when we were in 2019, it wasn't as windy. No, I, just, I think, yeah, we got lucky maybe. Maybe, and maybe it's just a bad season for wind because apparently in summer on the West Coast, it's windy. Oh, well, yeah, every summer's apparently. Mm, Practically, horrific. you can't even do, do anything, anything up the West Coast. Mm. Yeah. Anyway, crazy. so um, Go yeah, to the we're east. Go to the east coast. No, Don't I'm kidding. Too many, too many people there. <laughs> um, <laughs> we are heading up to Ningaloo Station tomorrow, so we're hoping that our camp there is more on the beach. Here, we're kind of um, separated by a dune system and the road, so not exactly what we were hoping for here, but it's been nice enough to chill out. Good morning everyone, so we are up at it, packed up and we are about to head off. We're actually heading further up the coast today, we're heading to Ningaloo Station and doing another station stay there. Uh, so really excited about this one, we've heard a lot about Ningaloo ever since we went through in 2019. So first up we need to go dump our dunny, which is going to be an experience. We've only dumped one out of a caravan before, so or out of a van. So <laughs> it's going to be a good time. It's going to be a good time. Dumping our dunny. Oh yeah, figure it out. <laughs> oh, I'm glad we used it this trip and like, 
this is pretty it. much like the reason we bought it yeah. um, was for this part of the west coast. So it's a bit of a pain to carry because it obviously takes up so much room. But um, yeah, it's a good thing, good option to have. It is. It's pretty amazing that we can fit in the build out. It I is. think it's yeah, it's we pretty cool. We'd have so much more storage if we didn't. Yeah, well, I think it's called cool, Project Overlander, like, gives you the option. Yeah. I mean, it's either storage or you can fit the dunny. Yeah. It's pretty good. But at this station, you can hire them. So I think it's $10 a day. They do a discount for if you stay over, I think it's four to seven days, you'll get a, a discounted rate. And then you put down a $50 cash deposit They'll, that they will give back to you if your toilet is clean when you return it. So if I knew that was an option, we might not have brought it. But going up to Ningaloo, I'm not sure if they have the same kind of policy up there. We started on our journey to Ningaloo Station by first stopping in Coral Bay for a few supplies. After that, there is a four-wheel drive track from Coral Bay called the Carbadilla Ningaloo Road, which is four-wheel drive only. This track runs along the coast up to Yardie Creek. It's worth checking conditions of Yardie Creek as it changes constantly. We started the track now, so as always we are dropping our air a bit, just for a more comfortable ride. The track was corrugated but pretty easy going. There is plenty of nice spots to stop along the way and have a break by the sea. So we have just pulled up to camp. This is South Lafroy Bay at Ningaloo Station. We are camped right on the beach and that was just by potluck. I just picked this site because it was available and this is where we are. It's pretty windy, um, which isn't ideal obviously, but it's not too bad, it's doable. So we'll set up camp. There's actually just a few vehicles over here bogged. So Matt and Adrian have just gone to see if they need a hand. We might pull someone out before we set up. but. Yeah, this is pretty cool. Kind of wish we spent two nights here rather than two nights at the other place, but oh well. This 200 got caught up trying to get the boat out. The 300 coming to help also got bogged just beside it. It was a case of tyre pressures being a bit high. They also didn't have any basic recovery gear like shovels, recovery boards or kinetic ropes. So, recovered two vehicles as soon as we got to camp. <laughs> yes, 300 to 200, towing yep. a boat, so... Gee, tell you what, some people just had zero recovery gear. Like, yeah, they didn't have a thing. Absolutely not a thing. So... And I'm like, this would have been a long digging by hand. <laughs> yeah. Come along. Anyway. So glad we could help, and now we're all suited up, we're going to go for a snorkel. Yeah. <laughs> 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 Being able to walk straight off the beach into the reef like this is something really special. The water temperature is beautiful and you can get in one end of the beach and let the current take you over the reef. Adrian and Ellen remarked that this was their favourite experience on the whole trip. We've just made it to Yardy Creek in Cape Range National Park and it is dry yeah, choppy, as. Choppy there, eh? There's absolutely no water in it but there's two cars ahead of us that look like they've absolutely chopped a shoot out of it so. So there we go. Oh well, I, think, I don't think it's been them. I think it's probably been everyone who's crossed it so. Mm. Okay, my turn. <laughs> After going through Exmouth, we started heading to Charles Knife Gorge Road. But before that, we checked out Shot Hole Canyon Road. 
We had no expectations for this, but were pleasantly surprised. It's definitely worth a look if you're in the area. After that, we went to Charles Knife Gorge Road and found a lookout. This is one of the most spectacular views in Australia, with the ocean both to the east and the west. We settled in for the afternoon to watch the sunset. morning everyone at the top of Charles Knife Gorge here had a beautiful sunrise and it's a pretty epic lookout it's definitely worth a look if you're in the area um, I think that kind of ends our uh, WA coast trip it does yeah so, so now we're we Perth and up yeah now we are heading east back home yeah. so we said the exact same thing last time <laughs> we were here I, I said a couple of years ago when we were in the Hilux just over there I said, oh, we're heading back east now. Um, yeah, this so, is yeah. as far north as you, we kind of go and then, yeah, start to head east. We're obviously going northeast, but yeah, still heading east. Plan today is to head toward Millstream National Park into the Pilbara. Um, Adrian's got a bit of a plan. He's got a bit of prospecting in mind. And we're happy just to go along because we've done parts of this area before and then that'll take us to parts that we haven't seen. So. Yeah, find some nice bush camps. So. Yeah. Uh, thanks for coming along on the WA coast journey. It is an epic part of the world. Um, it is worth coming. Yeah, So, definitely. yeah, we'll see you in the next episode and we'll head into the Pilbara. Thanks for watching, everyone. 